man is a moron, he is an incompetent, he is a radical, and he is going to turn the entire Midwest into a third world state. This guy put tampons in boys' bathrooms. Fourth grade boys' bathrooms, tampons. He wants CRT taught. He was all about toppling the Columbus statue. Transgender surgeries for minors, carbon electrical grid by 2040, a driver's licenses for illegal immigrants. In function, his abortion policy allows abortion until birth. He's known for being the Bernie Sanders of Congress. This guy changed the flag of this state to look more like Somalia. What is wrong with this guy? They're going to turn the entire Midwest into Mogadishu. That's their plan. That's their policy. You just got a small taste of the coping and seething from Republicans who collectively shit their pants today after finding out that Kamala Harris chose Tim Waltz as her running mate. He is the antidote to their phony populism, and as you can see, they're trying to throw everything at the walls to see what sticks, but the takeaway is that they don't really know what attack to land with because he's kind of a hard guy to attack, so they're panicking as a result. But the problem is that whatever they come up with, it's got to be really good because he's somebody who's very good at dispelling GOP bullshit. And the problem is, as they try to paint him as this extremist, it might actually backfire because it's becoming increasingly clear to voters as they learn more about him that, oh, this guy is popular as the governor of Minnesota for a reason. The things he's been able to accomplish in his state actually helped people's lives. I mean, listen. He hasn't ushered in socialism. I wish he was a socialist, but he's not. Workers in Minnesota don't own the means of production. Corporations haven't been nationalized. He's just a pretty standard Democrat who used his majority wisely. He passed basic policies that improved the lives of people in his state, and now he's loved because of that. And that's what terrifies Republicans the most, right? Because if Harris and Walls can replicate even a fraction of what he did in Minnesota at the national level— it's game, set, match for Republicans. They know what happened the last time Democrats elected somebody who was really popular, FDR. They had to institute term limits because he kept getting elected. Now, I'm not saying that Harrison Walls are the second coming of FDR, but I'm just saying that they know what can happen if the Democratic Party actually energizes its base and passes policies that benefit working class people. But I want to talk about some of the attacks there that you saw. So Kaylee McEnany claimed that he greenlit gender affirming surgeries for minors. Now we've heard this before. It's false. You can't qualify for bottom surgery until you're 18. But he made it so that way parents with trans kids can seek refuge in Minnesota if they've been persecuted in states like Florida and Texas. Those states banned gender affirming care for trans minors. That care is medically necessary and life-saving. So the decision to give trans youth puberty blockers and HRT, that's always been left up to the families. And he's just keeping it that way. And he said, we're going to keep it this way in my state. So if you're fleeing your state, we will give you the bodily autonomy that you're looking for, that you've always had with regard to this issue, which brings us to the issue of abortion because he's also done the same thing in that regard. Now, she also claimed that he supports abortion up until birth. Right, if the life of the mother is in danger. But please, continue to make the case as to why Americans should uh, have less bodily autonomy, because that's not going to help you. And the more that you talk about taking away rights from people, the more support you hemorrhage. Now, she also brought up the law that he signed, which allows undocumented immigrants to get driver's licenses. Now, I think that they can hurt him and Harris because their attacks on the border and whatnot, even though they're hyperbolic and xenophobic, they've been successful to a degree. But this can be explained by somebody like Tim, Tim Walls. So undocumented immigrants, they live in the state of Minnesota. That's just the fact of reality. And they're going to drive. So the question is, would you rather them be tested for competency before getting behind the wheel and give them the, the ability to get insurance to protect you? Or... Would you prefer more incompetent people on the roads who aren't insured? It's a common sense policy that protects everyone in the state. So there were other attacks that they lobbed at him, but I think that those are the ones that should be explained and that can be explained. But there are other attacks, as you saw, that just don't have to be explained. Kevin McCarthy, for example, said that he was known as the Bernie Sanders of Congress, 
which would sound cool, but the problem is that Bernie Sanders is already the Bernie Sanders of Congress because Bernie Sanders is in Congress, so good job, dipshit. But, I mean, if you're saying he's basically Bernie Sanders 2.0, that's a great argument for us because he is the most popular politician in America. So be my guest. Make that argument. Now, my favorite line of attack was that he changed. <laughs> I can't even believe this is real. He changed the Minnesota flag to look like Somalia's flag. I have no response. So needless to say, the attacks aren't very good. But I will point out that the right is at least trying to attack him based on policy. Whereas when it comes to Kamala Harris, they've been conspiracy mongering about whether or not she's lying about being black. And I can't quite tell the difference here and why they're attacking a woman of color differently than the white guy. But regardless, they've been real quick to play identity politics when it comes to Kamala. But now they're trying to play the whole he's a radical game, you know, when it comes to Tim Walls. And I've just got to say... This playbook is predictable and it's stale. Now, we've only scratched the surface with that first compilation that I've shown you. Uh, for example, Libs of TikTok's Chaya Raichik tweeted out Tampon Tim with a picture of his face on a box of tampons. And Tampon Tim was even trending on Twitter. Now, listen, if you didn't know any better, you'd think that they found some creepy story where he did something gross with a tampon, much like the uh, fake JD Vance couch story, right? But there's nothing there with regard to to him being called Tampon Tim. The reason why they're calling him Tampon Tim is because he signed a law mandating free tampons in all schools for grades 4 through 12th grade. Just to reiterate, they're attacking him for giving away free feminine hygiene products. You're going to attack him for giving away free school lunches? For legalizing weed next that's just good policy objectively speaking now there's another angle to it which is why they want to focus on this he's mandating all school bathrooms carry tampons both male and female in order to accommodate students and teachers who happen to be trans men okay but this is bad because why why is this particularly bad because trans bad dipshits like Chaya Raichik, whose world revolves around hating trans people and LGBTQ plus people think that this is going to resonate because normal Americans will see this and think, oh, this is so extreme. But I mean, if you are against this, is there any real material harm being done here? Like, is somebody going to say, I can't vote for Harris now because my son is going to go to school and see tampons in the bathroom? Come on. They're thinking that they're going to be able to use transphobia to attack him. But the problem for them is that if we've learned anything from the 2022 and 2023 elections, it's that that attack does not work. The most transphobic politicians lost their races because Americans just don't think that this is the most pressing matter, even if they agree with Republicans. Republicans who are using this line of attack are overestimating how salient they think this issue will be for voters because they're out of touch. Right. You're not going to get anybody to come out and vote for Donald Trump and J.D. Vance because they're the most anti-trans. But what we, you will do is mobilize people who are trans, people who are allies to trans, who have friends and family members that are trans to vote against you. There are many of us. Now, this attack from Shia Raichik isn't necessarily indicative of the attack that the greater Republican Party will use. Having said that, though, it has been a focus of the GOP. And if they continue to run with this anti-trans line of attack, it's just not going to resonate. Now, my favorite thing that they've tried to do so far is they've tried to steal Walls's weird attack that he popularized and coined against J.D. Vance. And they're trying to use it against him, but they have an anti-trans twist that they're using here. What could be weirder than signing a bill into law that requires schools to stock tampons in boys' bathrooms? Or weirder than signing legislation allowing minors to receive sex change operations? Try electing the man who signed those bills, Vice President of the United States. Enter Chief Weirdo Tim Walls. As governor of Minnesota, Walls supported legislation that endangers minors hurts women, and puts radical ideology ahead of common sense. Now Kamala wants Walls to enforce those laws on a national scale. Tim Walls, too weird, too radical. They are so fucking cooked. They're so fucking cooked. I don't think they realize how lame it is to just copy the Democratic Party's attack against you and say, actually, you're weird. 
Like, imagine if Kamala was like, they're radical and extreme. There would actually be merit to that because they are radical and extreme, but it's uncreative to just copy and paste their argument and say, no, you, right? Now, I get that they're upset about being called weird, but this ad kind of proves Tim Wall's point that they're really weird because it is weird that they're so hyper-focused on trans people's hygiene and the genitalia of children. That is weird. You're proving their point. And they claim that he's letting minors receive sex change operations. Is that so? Okay, name one minor who had bottom surgery in Minnesota. Go ahead, just one. I'll wait. Yeah, see, the reason why they didn't do that, the reason why they had to use a stock video of surgeons is because that's not happening. It's not happening, Jack. That's malarkey. But again, here they are obsessing over the genitals of children. And they're saying, no, actually, they're weird because they're not as obsessed with children's genitals as we are. Fucking insane. They are so dumb. Listen, if they actually cared about genital mutilation, they'd be campaigning against circumcision, right? But they're not doing that because they're lying. And it's worth repeating again that they just tried this strategy and it failed. It's shocking how unprepared they are now that Joe Biden isn't in the race. For example, the Trump war room tweeted a picture of him with fellow Minnesota Democratic lawmaker Ilhan Omar. And um, Ben Shapiro thought that this was such a burn that he retweeted it. But I've got to ask, <laughs> what exactly is the att attack here? You're like, look at this picture of him and Ilhan Omar. <laughs> They're so stupid. What's the point? Muslim bad? Or is he taking a picture uh, with a far left extremist, therefore that confirms that he's also a far left extremist? I mean, what exactly is the takeaway? Why, why, is, the, why is this something that you would tweet out as if it's a good thing uh, that's going to help you and hurt him? You know, maybe, here, here, this is my theory, maybe since Ilhan is Somalian, maybe he's Somalian secretly? I mean, they are doing the Kamala's not really black thing, so perhaps they're going in a Tim Walls isn't really white direction. I mean, who knows? They are fucking stupid. Or maybe they're saying that he's loyal to Somalia, right? That's plausible considering that, uh, you know, there's already accusations from Fox News morons that he changed the flag to resemble Somalia. Now, that's not the first time that that attack was lobbed. It first appeared on social media, which is where they might have gotten it from. And as you can see, uh, this person tweeted about how he changed Minnesota's flag to resemble the Somalian flag. You know what? I agree. Let's just run with that. <laughs> now, RNC Research tweeted out a quote of him saying, one person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Mm. See, he's finished. This is devastating right there. Now, also the Trump war room tweeted that he's against a cold war with China and doesn't think that the US should be adversarial towards them. I cannot believe this, the audacity. He should be starting war with China. Now, here's probably the most devastating attack that I've seen. Trump influencer Joey Manorino tweeted out a picture of his family and a confused person responded saying, uh, looks normal, what's the problem here? And Manorino responded saying, just sharing, we'll let others find problems if there are any. Hang on a second. You tweeted out a picture of his family so your weirdo followers can do opposition research? I'll just say they're not beating the weird allegations. And by find problems, I'm assuming that that's code for, hey, everybody, let's transvestigate his family. Because that's what you all do. It's, it's very weird and creepy. But even if that's not the case... Are you so terminally online that you think making fun of his family is going to help Republicans in some way and win people over? I just don't get it. They look like a normal American family. You're the one with the problem, buddy. You're the one who's weird. But to be fair, they did find one semi-scandal, I guess. So there's a picture of him when he was arrested for getting a DUI, and they're accusing him of pretending to be deaf to get out of it. As you can see, Ben Shapiro even retweeted that line of attack. But even though Ben Shapiro retweeted that to his millions of followers, it's still not catching on. Because one, he wasn't actually lying about being deaf, and I don't know how he'd use that to get out of a DUI because he was arrested, so clearly... He didn't get out of it by pretending to be deaf. I don't get it. Uh, two, this isn't going to hurt him because that moment was the catalyst for him to actually sober up and change his life. And he did. So if anything, he could turn that into 
an ad for himself and say, listen, I was at my lowest point. I was arrested for a DUI. I turned my life around. I started to focus on my family. I mean, come on. Now, I want to talk about J.D. Vance because it's so crazy how Tim Walls is basically the perfect anti-J.D. Vance, right? He's a real populist. J.D. Vance is a phony populist. This year, J.D. Vance voted against IVF, and Tim Walls, he conceived his family using IDF. But I do want to get to what Trump and J.D. Vance in particular are saying about him. First of all, the campaign released a statement and they argue that he doesn't actually understand rural America and believes that rural America is mostly cows and rocks. Mm, okay, very convincing. And they later attack him, forget this, embracing policies that allow convicted felons to vote. <sighs> that one is just, that's incredible. Honestly, hats off to them. Now, <laughs> I want to pause for a moment just so we can kind of bask in the irony of that statement. Donald Trump, a literal convicted felon, is attacking walls for expanding voting rights to felons. You can't make this shit up. I mean, Trump should be fucking thanking him or shutting up at a minimum. But instead, he's attacking him for expanding voting rights to people like him, which is weird because first and foremost, voters are going to wonder now that you said this whether or not felons should be voting and it logically follows that if they think felons shouldn't vote maybe they think they shouldn't be allowed to run for president which is not a thought that you want voters to have at this moment as you run for president as a felon so it's one of the most self-defeating attacks i have ever seen a republican use in the history of politics and it wasn't some slip of the tongue they typed it out and maybe they reread it at least once but they were like Let's roll with this. Let's attack him for giving voting rights to felons. This is amazing. This is amazing. Now, J.D. Vance was asked about walls, and he uh, basically echoed the same sentiment from Fox News, albeit with a lot less charisma. The reason I didn't say a whole lot about Tim Waltz is because the Democrats have showed a willingness to pull a little switcheroo on us. So I don't even know if we're actually going to get Tim Waltz out of this campaign. And I think that a lot of us are asking ourselves, well, it's not going to be official until the Democrats actually nominate him, I guess, at their convention next week. So that's the first reason. The second reason is, look, Tim Waltz's record is a joke. He's been one of the most far left radicals in the entire United States government at any level. But I think that what Tim Waltz's selection says is that Kamala Harris has bent the knee to the far left of her party, which is what she always does. Kamala Harris listened to the Hamas wing of the party. She selected Tim Waltz, a guy who wants to ship more manufacturing jobs to China, who wants to give illegal aliens driver's license, and who wants to make the fentanyl crisis that we just heard about so much worse because he refuses to do his job and actually make it easier for American citizens and not illegal aliens to live a good life. So I think what it says is that Kamala Harris is running as a San Francisco liberal, she is governed as a San Francisco liberal, and she's chosen a running mate who will be a San Francisco style liberal. The last thing that I'll say about Tim Waltz is to her credit, Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz do make an interesting team because if we remember the rioting in the summer of 2020, Tim Waltz was the guy who let rioters burn down Minneapolis and then Kamala Harris was the one who bailed the rioters out of jail. So there's an interesting team in that sense. He might be the least charismatic politician that I've ever seen. Worse than Mike Pence, worse than Hillary Clinton. Everything about him feels so synthetic. Now, if you zoom out, it looks like he's actually at a Kamala Harris rally, as David Dole pointed out with this screenshot that he shared. And I've got to say, I cannot wait to watch Walls debate this guy. It's going to be an absolute bloodbath, and nothing J.D. Vance says or does will prepare him for the ass whooping that he's going to receive when he faces off against Tim Walls. He's kind of shooting off the hip there in that video that we saw, but he doesn't really have anything meaningful to say about Walls aside from, oh, he's a radical Democrat, which is something that they would have used against Josh Shapiro if he were the pick. But since he's not the pick, they're now pretending as if Kamala Harris didn't pick Josh Shapiro because Democrats are anti-Semitic. J.D. Vance said it, and the same line of attack is being echoed on social media and by right-wing propagandists. But to my surprise, the Democratic Party leadership has been really good at combating this batshit insane lie. For example, Nancy Pelosi responded to accusations that the left was against Shapiro due to anti-Semitism by basically saying point blank. No, I think it's actually more about policy. So kudos to Nancy Pelosi, because lately she's on a winning streak for me. Now, moreover, 
I've got to give it to Chuck Schumer of all people, who responded to idiot Eric Erickson, who said, no Jews allowed at the top of the Democratic Party. And Schumer, Senate Majority Leader, literally, of the Democratic Party, responded saying, news to me, amazing. Now, look at the community note that also pointed out how many Jewish people are in positions of power in the Democratic Party, including Kamala's husband, who happens to be Jewish. Now, Ben Shapiro decided to butt in with the most ironic comment ever, saying, sorry, Eric, just meant Jews who aren't willing to play beards for anti-Semites in their own party. But Ben, let's not forget that you're shilling for the presidential candidate who said there were very fine people on both sides about the neo-Nazis in Charlottesville who chanted Jews will not replace us. Trump also had Steve Bannon as part of his administration and likely will bring him back if he wins again, who literally did not want his children to go to a school with Jewish children. So you don't have a leg to stand on when it comes to this. And his entire identity politics attack, as well as this whole identity politics game that the Republican Party is playing, it's going to fall flat. Just like the whole coup line fell flat, right? So you can say, oh, she chose Tim Walz because he's not Jewish, but nobody's buying it. You have no legitimacy with the Democratic Party. And after Trump has said multiple times that you're not a real Jew or you're a crappy Jew if you support the Democratic Party, I feel like this is something, again, that you shouldn't draw attention to because it's just going to make you all look bad. But on the subject of Trump, if you really want to gauge how bad their attacks are, you've got to look at Truth Social, right? Because Trump's tweets kind of give us a little bit of insight into how he's feeling about the race. So let's look at his timeline. Quote, this is the most radical left duo in American history. There has never been anything like it, and there never will be again. Crazy Kamabla, I guess this is his new name for her, which is awful, is indeed crazy. I hear there's a big movement to bring back Crooked Joe. Okay, where are you hearing this from? Uh, he adds, What are the chances that Crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the U.S., whose presidency was unconstitutionally stolen from him by Kamabla, Barack Hussein Obama, Crazy Nancy Pelosi, Shifty, Ad <laughs> Shifty Adam Schiff, Crying Chuck Schumer, and others on the lunatic left crashes the Democratic National Convention and tries to take back the nomination, beginning with challenging me to another debate. He feels that he made a historically tragic mistake by handing over the U.S. presidency, a coup, to the people in the world he most hates, and he wants it back now. Do you hear that? Ah. That's the sound of Donald Trump shitting his pants and i've got to say seeing him that worried is so much more reassuring to me um uh, because the the best that he can do is fantasize about joe biden coming back and being the nominee again this is sad i mean this is quintessential cope like he's literally coping because he can't fathom the reality that he now has to run against kamala harris this is embarrassing on so many levels and i've got to say i've never seen the republican party so unprepared for an election and i understand that they've only had a couple of weeks to recalibrate after joe biden dropped out but i would have expected at least some attack prepared for kamala before joe biden dropped out but he still hasn't even settled on a nickname and now that tim walls is in the race it seems like well the most convenient strategy is the losing strategy, where we be weird and attack trans people while screeching about how extreme Harrison Waltz are. But you've tried this, and again, the strategy doesn't work. Americans aren't going to think that a progressive ticket is more radical than a fascist ticket whose leader tried to overthrow the last election. Don't get me wrong, he can still win this election. But all I'm saying is that all of the attacks that they're lobbing at Democrats, they're not going to help them win this election. So... Seeing all of this, I've got to say, it's amazing. I don't know what's going to happen with regard to the election, but watching them squirm is really, really enjoyable. I'm going to come. Do not come. 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 Welcome to the Come, come. Zone. Come. 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 